Okay, let's pray. Father God, thank you for this morning. Lord, we thank you for the God that we can just come before you, Lord, with our hearts open, our minds ready to receive the word of God. Lord, we are a good soil, Father. We thank you for the God that faith is our first response, God. Faith is the thing that we believe in most, God, is because your word says that without faith we can't please you, Lord. So we thank you for the God that you will bless us in this time, Lord. You may pray amen and amen. amen. Glory to his name. All right. Yeah, bring it right in. Let's say, everyone say dynamic. Dynamic. Faith. faith. Say it again. Dynamic. Dynamic. Faith. faith. Who has seen your faith, in, faith increase more and more and more? Anyone see that at all? You've been talking about this? More and more faith, more and more faith that you're using more and more. Okay, praise God. So, we're going to start from, uh, from where we left off. We're on week number six. And we have 30 more weeks to go. Faith. Yeah, possible. We'll see. So, let's start talking. Faith isn't a matter of getting God to do something for us. Faith is a matter of releasing what God has already given us by faith. I'll say it again. Faith isn't a matter of getting God to do something for us. Faith is a matter of releasing what God has already given us by faith. I'll say it again. Faith is not a matter of getting God to do something for us. Faith is a matter of releasing what God has already given us by faith. That's why you call it dynamic faith. Everyone say, I, I already, have already have everything, everything I, need I need to succeed, I succeed on, earth on earth by grace. By grace. Amen. All right. Now one says, we must appropriate the gifts of grace by faith. We've been given everything having to do with life and godliness, and we must appropriate those things by faith. You can't get what God has for you by working for it. It's a free gift. Amen? Amen? It's a free gift. So you have to believe God for it and go get it. Now watch this. For the New Testament Christian, we aren't headed to the battle. We're coming from the victory. I'll say it again. For the New Testament Christian, we are not headed to the battle, but we're coming from the victory. Watch this. I'll explain it for you. When you have an issue of faith or a mountain to move or a challenge, you're not going to go fight it. You're going to believe God that whatever you need is on the other side of that mountain. And then God will move the mountain for you. We don't go in to fight. We come in battle. The Bible says that we should allow the Lord to fight our own battles. I'm sorry, to fight battles for us. If we look at the second chapter of Chronicles, and, and all the people were fighting and fighting and fighting, God says, you know what? Did you just worship me? I, God is saying, I will fight your battle for you. Okay, so all this working and, and trying and pushing that we do, church, forgive my friend, but we ain't got to do all that. If you believe God for what you've got to do, then he'll see it come to pass. The Bible says that faith without what is there? Word. Now watch this. So when do you work and when do you rest? When you've done all that you can do, then you rest. When you prayed, when you believed God, for when you uh, fasted, for when you did all the things he told you to do, then you rest. But if you haven't done the basics yet, you've got to keep working. That's what the Bible says, that we've got to work on our own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. So you keep working it out, working it out, working it out, until you see what happens. And watch this group. We're going to move on. Ephesians 1.16 says this in the NLT. It says, we have not stopped thanking God for you. Or I've not thanked God for you. I pray for you constantly. Asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given us to those who he called. The M5 Bible says in the same chapter, it says, I do not cease to give you thanks for making mention of you in my prayers. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he might grant you a, watch the church, a spirit of wisdom. When you get wisdom, then you get revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of God. So for church, we've got to pray for wisdom. When you get wisdom, you get revelation. When you get revelation, you get knowledge. When you get knowledge, you get what we call enlightenment. Of knowing that everything that you need is already taken care of by Christ Jesus. So if you're a Christian, as a matter of fact, if you were saved or unsaved, when Christ died for us before the earth began, it's already ours. They would say, it's already, mine. it's already mine. So whatever you need from God, you have it. You just got to believe God for it. 
Because if you have no faith for it, you can't please God and you can't get what you're supposed to get. If you don't have any faith for it, you'll never get or be where God's called you to be. It's soaking in. Praise God. Watch this. We don't deserve, nor can we be good enough for God's grace. You don't deserve it, so if we're trying to work for it, nor can you be good enough for God's grace. How many of y'all here who are parents make your kids work for their love for you? Think about it. Think about it. How many of us parents make our kids work for our love? It's ridiculous, isn't it? But we loved our kids before we even conceived them, didn't we? Think about that. You thought about your kids and how you're going to bless them and love them before they were even here. The same thing for God. What God has for you is already there for you before you were even conceived. That's why he said that he died for us while we were still sinners. Oh, yes. While you were still cussing and sleeping around and acting crazy, he died for you. Oh, yes. We got kids here. Well, praise God. Oh, yes. All right? So as a Christian, it is imperative that we understand that you cannot work for God's grace. We are not a works mentality Christian uh, religion. The, those are the Jews. Those were uh, anybody else who didn't know. We don't have to work for God's love or His grace. It's already there for us. It's there for us just to take by faith. If you need healing, it's there. Lord, I need healing. If you need peace, it's there. Lord, I thank you for your peace. If you need love, it's there. Lord, I thank you for your love. If you need forgiveness, Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness. Whatever you want, church, is there. But you've got to access it by faith. Then watch this. So we don't deserve nor can we be good enough for God's grace. It is called unmerited favor and blessing. Grace is something done before we sin. So you already have grace for you before you even sin. Now don't work the sin till it's dead. Don't just keep sinning because you can, oh, I got grace. That's not what I'm talking about either. Because you know what? If you love God, then you won't sin anymore. You will do whatever you can not to sin. You will, you will work it to where you won't have to sin anymore. If you really love God. So don't tell me you love God and you enjoy sinning. The Bible says that if you love me, you what? Obey my commands. Amen. So don't tell me or don't, don't, you know what? Don't fool yourself. So you know, I love God, but you keep sinning huh. over and over. It's a lifestyle. But don't, don't even go there. Huh. Kids, don't say your mom and dad love you, but you, don't, but you don't obey them. Huh. I love you, but you don't obey them. You can't do that. You, that's called a hypocrite. A hypocrite. It's a large line Christian. <laughs> Just with you. Praise God. <laughs> Ephesians 2 4 says this But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. Everyone say, God, God. loves me. God. Here we go. Now watch this. Even when we were dead in trespass, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. Now watch this. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. Watch this. For by grace you have been saved through faith. So we're saved by grace. It's already there for us. Through faith. Whose faith is that? The faith of Jesus Christ. Now watch this. And that not ourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone boast. So you won't brag about it. Well, you know, I'm going to heaven because I'm, because I'm so good. No, you're not. You a sorry, nasty, stinky sinner before you met Christ Jesus. You're pathetic. But now in Christ, all things are made new. So don't revel in the fact that you can sin and then ask for forgiveness. If that's your motivation, then just stay a sinner. Just stay out in the world. Just keep loving the world. Because you know why? You're a hypocrite. You don't really love God. You love what he can do for you. All right. Too bad kids are in here. Okay, praise God. No, it's good. So now, let's look back on renewing our minds and our confession. We have to, re uh, we have to re renew our minds. All right. Romans 12, 1 says this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. The Message Bible says this. So here's what I want to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. 
So every part of your life, you give to God. You're eating. That's why we pray before we eat. That's why we pray before we go to work, pray before we go to school, pray, pray before we go to sleep, pray when we wake up. We give everything to God. We give it all to Him. Now watch this. Romans 12, 2 says this. Now church, this is powerful. And do not be conformed to this world. Watch this. Don't be conformed to this world. Listen. Don't be conformed to this world. Skip down one slide, please, verse. Watch this. It says, or don't be conformed. This is for me. Don't be conformed or affected by what happens to you in this world so much as to dilute or even emasculate the word, authority, and power of God. Amen. Woo, that was good. Did y'all catch that? Don't let what happened to you in the world make you change in your mind how powerful God's word is. Think about that for a second. We sometimes see how God loves us through the lens of our experiences. We can't do that, church. God's word stands alone over here. What happens to us, we take that to his word and submit it to the word of God. For example, come here, be a teacher, come here back. All right? I'm going to show you all what we do as Christians a lot of times, all right? Or, or, or you know what? Now, these are probably two very, very magnanimous, outgoing. They'll preach the gospel to anybody. You know, if people on the side of the street, clan members, anybody. I mean, they'll just do it. So, so I want y'all to begin to share the, the, the word of God to me. Uh, and you all are super Christians. I'm a kind of a halfway Christian because I'm afraid to use my faith. So I want y'all just to begin to share the word of God to me as far as um, walking in faith. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of walking in faith because of what happens. So, so go ahead. Just, just start talking. Well, you know, Jesus loves you, man. Well, well, no, wait, no. If he loves me, then he would have my mom die. Or he would have my dad die. So he didn't really love me. Go ahead. Why, why would you believe that? If he, he, because if he loves me, then he would have these people in my life hurt me so much. What hurts you? What, why, why are you so angry? What hurts you? Because, my, because, because everyone has left me. They betrayed me. I've been hurt. I've been molested. No one cares about me anymore. And so why does God like me? Because he loves you because he gave his life. Jesus gave his life for you. He made you. Yeah. Well, my sister who's dead gave her life to him. Yeah. And, and if, she, if she died in Christ, then she's with him. And so we want to bring you and in so you can get to know her. And you love her? So yeah, you I did. You want to see her? Yeah, I did. All right. Okay, so y'all catch that? Thank you. Y'all catch that? Yeah. See, we many, many times see God through what we've been through. You can't do that. You cannot do that. You can't judge God's word by the life you've lived. You take the life you live and let God judge that. Hope y'all catching that. That's why it is so important, church, to know the word of God. Um, and, and, and just keep that in your mind. So what does emasculate mean? It means literally to deprive of strength, vigor, and spirit. So when you say, well, Lord, I would forgive this person, but they hurt me. You've just emasculated God's word. You've deprived it of power, vigor, and spirit. You've diluted his word. So now watch this important. Let's look at um, Mark 7, 13. You're doing this. You're making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you've handed down in many things such as this. What does that mean? When you say to God, well, God, I would serve you, but this happened. Well, God, but this God, but this God. You're making the word of God ineffective because of your tradition. Because you make the choice to not follow God, not obey God, because of what's happened in your life. You can't do that. Wow. Just let that sink in for a second. Raise your right toe if you've done that in the past. Think about it. Think about it. You judge God's word on how effective it is by what's happened to you in your life. Is that fair to God's word? No. Check it out. Just because someone dies, someone is hurt or injured, is God off the throne? He's still there. Watch this. When Jesus' own son was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, if there's any way you can take this cup from me or this punishment from me, please do it. If you read the, all the text, he asked his father three times, and his daddy said no three times. So does his father not love him? 
but he loves his purpose more. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Did y'all catch that? He will let you hurt for the purpose. He will let you hurt for, now is he going, hey, hurry, no. He's like, you know what? This has to happen. Now, I'm not saying that he revels in a sin that was committed towards you, but the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for those who love God and who call, who call according to his what? Purpose. purpose. His purpose. So whatever you've been through, y'all, if you love God, it'll all work itself out. He's not happy you went through it, but it's going to work to his favor. And he will get the glory. And you will have a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Watch this. When we see God through our own personal lens of life disappointments and failures, we inhibit his power to work in our lives. I'll read it again. When we see God through our own personal lens of life, disappointments, and failures, we inhibit his power to work in our own lives. Romans 12, 2 says this. This is in the Message Bible. Message Bible. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. See, God affects your heart first. Well, actually, it comes to your mind. And you know what? If you get offended by the word of God, like I said last week, then you got a dirty mind. So you need to clean your mind up and let God's mindset get in you. Then it gets in your heart. Then it gets in your mouth. Then it gets in your action. Then it gets in your lifestyle. And then it changes your life. Yep. See, God will, Christ will offend your mind to reveal your heart. Amen. If you get offended at the word of God, then you've shown your heart. If you are so angry, and, and then you go, well, you know what? So what's the word of God say about forgiveness? Why would I forgive? Then I've seen your heart. <laughs> well, you know, I can't forgive them. Well, then I've seen your heart. Well, I can't tie. Well, the word of God says tie. Well, I just can't. All right, and watch this. This is why we must begin to confess God's word over our heart and minds. Now, the first stage of confession is this. God's word does very little to change our situation. So, in the first time we can start con to confess, God's word does very little to change our situation. The first thing confession does is to, well, number one, renew our mind or renew your mind to God's will. When you start confessing God's word, you renew your mind to God's will. You renew your mind to God's will. That's number one. Because you know what? If you don't know God's will, then you don't, then you don't know God's way. Number two, then it'll cause faith to come. It'll cause faith to come. I told my wife, actually, you know, for the first five years, I said, honey, you know, you're beautiful, you're awesome, you're, you're incredible. She didn't believe me. I had to work it over and over. I had to work that word because you know why? She never heard it. And plus, you know what? Her love language isn't words. It's doing stuff. I mean, she likes me to say things like that, but that, that's not her love language. Her love language is me doing something for her. Taking the trash out, beating the kids, you know, stuff like that. Stuff that's biblical, biblical stuff, you know. You know, that's that, 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 so then faith comes by hearing and, hearing and 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 hearing the word of God. Now watch this. Think about your childhood. Now those of you who, who haven't had a beaver cleaver childhood, think about the words that were said to you. Were they said one time you believed them? They were said probably for four, five, six, seven, ten years. And you, wow. I am stupid. I am sorry. I don't deserve anybody at all. So you began to believe the words you heard, even though they were a lie. So now you've got to renew your mind. Huh. The word of God says that I can do all things through Christ which is me. The word of God says that my God shall supply all my needs. So no matter what lie you've been told, no matter what lie you've lived, You've got to now submit that to Christ and believe his word. If not, you'll live a lie. 
for the rest of your life. You will live a life. Hallelujah. Now, the word must be in your heart and in abundance before your confession can move mountains. I'll say it again. The word must be in your heart in abundance before your confession can move mountains. For example, Matthew 12, 34. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, what's the key word there? Abundance. 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 If your first word out of your mouth when you slam your finger in the door is... It's Sean Little Cuckoo, praise God, then hey, you roll with me. If the first word out of your mouth when you slam your finger in your door is something else, we need to pray for you. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So again, don't tell me that you, oh, I love God, praise God. And every word you say is death. Well, the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who speak it will enjoy the fruit of it. So what's coming out of your mouth daily? Is it life or death? I'll give, you, I'll give you a perfect example. You know about where you are right now in your life. Are you speaking life? Then, you're, then, then, then your harvest right now is bountiful and beautiful. But if you spoke death, or, and also too, if you live by the words that were spoken to you and they were alive, yeah, then, then you're probably pretty hurting right now. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if there's a lot of word in your heart, then you have a lot of stuff come out of your mouth that's of God. If there's no word in your heart or very, very little, you gotta keep putting word in your in your heart over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again. Just more and more word. More and more. The word of God will make you stable, church. Stable. It'll make you it'll make you balanced and stable. It'll make you balanced and stable. When all hell breaks loose in your life, you won't freak out and, and, and start yelling and screaming and cussing and, 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 and just going all over the place. Well, no, the Word of God says this. Oh, no, the Word of God says this. Oh, no, the Word of God says this. So the Word of God will keep you stable from the big freak out factors. The Word of God will keep you stable. Do I ever freak out? No. I pray out. I breathe in and pray out. And those who know me know I'm not lying. You know, I mean, heck, uh, the leaders were at my house, the, the what, four hours after my mom died. I went screaming and yelling, rolling on the floor, trying to get in the casket with the no. So, you know, she's in heaven. I miss her. I, I, I hurt. I cry. And, I mean, I cried my eyes out. That's my mama. Your mom dies, you cry. If there's nothing, something wrong with you. So, I mean, you know. So, but the Bible says that we don't act as if those who have no hope. <laughs> we'll, sh we'll see where your hope is when something bad happens to you. Hey, you know what? You go to work Monday morning, and they say, hey, hey, you know what? We're downsizing. And you're the low man, the low woman on the totem pole. Here's your two-month severance pay. Take care and God bless. Hmm. Wow. Hey, you know what? You get to work, and you get a phone call, and your son or daughter has been in a, a school bus wreck or the, or, or the school car on fire. What are you going to do then? Don't call me. You need to pray. You need to pray. You need to get on your face and try to and cook and pray it. That's when you know you're stable, church. You're stable. You're stable. You get a bad report from the doctor. Well, the Word of God says this, and my body will line up with it. Amen. That's being stable. Okay? Praise God. Praise God. Abundance means that, it means that what is left over are your surplus. So, now, don't be a trier of the word, be a doer of the word. So if the word of God is going to keep us stable, let's look at James 1.5. James 1.5 says this. Praise God. If anyone lacks wisdom or anything else, so if you lack money, if you lack peace, if you lack love, if you lack wisdom or, or, or knowledge, if you lack anything that God says you already have, this is what it says do. Let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, or meaning that he won't ask it back. Now, and it will be given to who? Yeah. Or her, either one. That's a promise, and what's this? But let him or her ask how? Amen. Say it again. Amen. Oh, okay, here we go now. Without doing what? Down. Say it again. Down. Say it again. Down. Oh, okay, here we go. But let him or her ask in faith, without doubting, for he or him or her, who doubt is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man or woman suppose that he or she will receive anything from the Lord. 
Did you ever wonder why you don't get what you ask for? First of all, you ain't asking. And when you ask, you ain't asking in faith. And when you ask, don't ask in faith, you start doubting. So a trier is this. Well, you know, I try the word. All trying means is that you do the word until you don't see it manifest. That's not faith, folks. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, I have faith that we have 300 people. Do I see it right now? No, but it, it's here. Amen. We're, we're right. We're, we're a third of the way there. I have faith that every person under my voice is, is living prosperously, that they walk in blessing, that their kids are healthy, that, that they walk in wisdom and knowledge. Is, is it happening right now? No. <laughs> Trust me, no. But you know what? I believe God for it. Amen. Think about that. My faith is, is, is that both of my children will go to school on scholarship. Children. Or children or children. They'll, they'll have full rides where they go. Just like that right there. All right? So you watch it. Do, do I see it right now? No. But do I have faith for it? Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Ready? I have faith for an airplane. Ah. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Glory. Amen. I have faith for an airplane. Dead free. That God pays for. Do I see it down on, on, right there? On, on, do, do I see right there on Henderson uh, Industrial Road out there in my own hangar? Right. Do I see? No, I don't see it. But do I faith for it? Yes. Amen. That's faith. So, and see, I'm not going to quit believing because I don't see it. I, you know what? Tony had to believe God for 32 years for a husband. 32 years. She didn't compromise her body. She didn't compromise her her, her heart. She just stayed focused on what God said. Her girlfriend believed God for her husband for 40 years. Just got married. What, two years ago? Been two years? 40 years. Didn't compromise her body. Waited on God for 40 years for her husband. Wow. wow. TJ's grandmother waited for 60 years to see her son, his dad, get saved. 60 years. Did she quit praying? Oh, no, no. Because that's the faith of God in her. Amen. Amen. So you keep praying. You keep praying. That's faith. That is dynamic faith, church. Amen. Dynamic. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep going. I'm keep going. I'm keep going. I'm keep going. My kids will wear us out over stuff that we said we're going to do for them until they see it happen. <laughs> but you said, but I said your room would be clean too. But I said that to your room and either. But you, but you said, but you said, but you said. They remind me of my word. Are y'all getting this, church? Amen. This, 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 this is called GP. Good preaching. Here we go. Amen. Now, here's a, here, here's a phrase I want y'all to memorize. Ready, church? Can put that for me? Put in the rest of it. It says, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by, the, by, I, 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 I move by what I believe, and I believe the word of God. Okay? Let's say it again. Is that up there? Oh, I'm sorry. Where'd you go to school? Forgive me, wife. Pray for me. All right? I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by what I believe. And I believe what? Let's say it again. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by what I believe. And I believe the word of God. That must be your Christian mantra. Whatever stuff happens in your life, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by what I believe, and I believe the Word of God. You don't believe what your boss says, your mama says, you, you believe the Word of God. You're not moved by what you see. You know, your feelings are flaky. They're like pimples. They're here today and gone tomorrow. Don't believe your feelings. Don't believe what you see. You know why? The Bible says that we don't focus on what is seen, but what is unseen. Because what is seen is what? Temporary and what is not seen is eternal. Come on, Pastor. You are moved by what you believe and you believe the Word of God. But how can you believe it if you don't know it? You've got to know the Word of God. You've got to know the Word of God. You all need a, we all need, I need a, we need a revelation of God every single day. Before the stuff breaks loose in your life. Y'all know the best time to discipline your kids is not when they're doing bad, but before they do bad? Yep. We learned that in our parenting class. I mean, my mom just hit me whenever I acted stupid, so. <laughs> but think about it. The best time to get God's word in you is before the stuff happens, church. Don't let stuff happen, then you go to work. 
Well, I mean, that's important, but you know, if the word is in you, or when it happens, it won't affect you as badly. Watch this. God's, words, God's word produces the faith for the things God has given us. I'll say it again. God's word produces the faith for the things God has given us. God's word produces the faith for the things God has given us. What does it mean for you? The Word of God will give you faith. You know what? The Word of God is like a map. He will show you where the good stuff is. It's like a, you know what? It's like Siri. For those of us with iPhones. You, hey, you know what? You just press in and see. There you go. You just press in and go, I'm going to help you. Think about it. That's the Word of God for you. When you think about that, that's the Word of God. Why? Because the Word of God gives you faith for what God has already promised you for. It always does. Yeah, watch this church in closing. And I, and I want you all to get this. Grace is like a bank account. If your name is on the account, you can make a demand on it. I'll say it again. Grace is like a bank account. If you make a demand on it, you can make a withdrawal. Pat Miller is not my name. I can't go to Pat's bank and withdraw $8,000. That's right. <laughs> All right? Oh, watch this. We ready? I can't. This is, this is good. Unless I have a cosign. Says Pat Miller on it. I can't go to, to uh, Adam Scott's bank and say, hey, you know what? I'm here in Adam Scott's presence. Um, I kind of look like him. And so may I have a $10,000 camp? No, you can't. You have the authority and the right to whatever God has given you. That, and then, check it out, then you can put a demand on it. Right. How in the natural do you put a demand on money that you have in your bank? What do you, you got to do? Come on. Go to ATM, what do you have to do? Write, do, you, do you want a check for it? Amen? Or you can fill out a withdrawal slip. So, God's grace is like this. You have it already there for you, sitting there. But you've got to go and put a demand on it. Not, not on God, but on what he's given you. We don't go force God's hand. It's already there. So God, your word says that I have right to blessing, to favor, to prosperity, to peace, to love, to joy, to long-suffering. And Lord, I think, Lord, that I'm going to put a demand on that so it will be in my life manifested right now in Jesus' name. You have got to go. You have got to put a demand on what's yours. Everything that he's given you all is yours. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Say it again. It's all yours. But you've got to ask God for it. And put a demand on it. Every day. Amen? Amen. So this week, put a demand on what God has already given you. And you'll know what he's given you by his what? Word. Word. By his word. Let's pray.